Good morning folks, today's a travel day and we're going to attempt to go from here in Gothenburg, Sweden to Gdansk in Poland by boat and train and who knows what else. So basically we're going from G to G. Are you G to G? Let's go. I really like Gothenburg station, it's very light, airy and clean and we've got trees inside as well and the bus station is attached to the railway station as it should be As I have a wander around the platforms and a look at the trains I've got a bit of a confession to make Now the first leg of this journey will take us from here in Gothenburg to the capital Stockholm and that's a journey of about three and a half hours and there are a few different rail companies that do that trip I believe. Now I was originally meant to be going on MTRX or Matrix but I've somehow booked the wrong train. I booked the train from Stockholm to Gothenburg instead of Gothenburg to Stockholm. Now that's something that I would never normally do. I'm not sure if there's something weird about the website or I was just having a really bad day but I always check everything two and three times. I really don't know how that happened so if you're traveling with MTRX, just be very careful on that website. So yesterday I had this mad scramble trying to get another train to Stockholm that wasn't going to break the bank and I've managed to get on one of the high speed trains. So I'm looking forward to that. Each time I go into a different part of the station, I'm just amazed how beautiful it is. I'm getting so distracted just wandering about looking at this station. I need to remember I've got a train to catch. I can't be booking a third one. I must admit this is where I really need to focus because there are a couple of trains to Stockholm. There's the fast train that I'm on or there's a slow train. Now the slow train wouldn't actually get me to the ferry port in time for my ferry to Gdansk today so I need to be very, very careful. Here we are at platform four on my train, the high-speed SJ. Looks a bit boring in silver and grey, to be honest. Nah, I've changed my mind. I think it looks mean. Right, here we go. Looks all right. So this is my seat here, and we're right next to the bistro. Good morning and warm welcome for this SC Fosby train for 30 bound for Stockholm. The wee onboard bistro looks like a great comfy place to come during the journey and all the food looks nice and fresh. Right, let's have a look around this seat. We start with nice big cup holders, a proper sturdy table and a wee coat hook. These are the rubbish bags and there's also bags of legroom. The seat itself is big and plush. LNER could certainly learn a thing or two from this and considering it isn't even a premium product, it feels pretty premium to me. Simple, functional and very comfortable. Riktigt god förmiddag och varmt välkomna ombord detta SJ 
snabbtåg 430 mot Stockholm. Och har du en barnvagn så behöver du fälla ihop den och lägger även den på anvisad plats. Mindre bagage går jättebra att lägga upp i hattyllorna eller har på stolen framför. Då är det ju lite först och kvar som gäller där, så. Ja, If you have a connection to Uppsala C with the NM940 Manator, the train departs to 11.576 and the departure time is 2.21 p.m. from train 17. So welcome to Stockholm folks, a city that unfortunately we're not going to see much of because we need to get down to the ferry terminal and the ferry leaves from a place that I'm not even going to try to pronounce but I think it's about an hour and a half away. Well actually no, it looks like there's regular trains to get there and it only takes an hour. I thought I was going to have to change and it'd be quite complicated but I suppose that makes sense because it is quite a major ferry terminal so the connection should be pretty good. Just from coming in on the train, Stockholm seems really cool but it also feels like a big city compared to Gothenburg. I think we made the right choice.
Right, so I've just checked and the 42X is a train we're looking for, but it's a commuter train. So you don't need to buy a ticket for it. You just scan your debit card as you go through. I've just got to try and find though, where are the commuter trains? Ah, this way. I could get a slightly later train and spend a bit more time in Stockholm, but I don't want to take any chances. I would rather just get to where the ferry departs from and know that I'm there and that I'm not going to be stressing or running late. It feels a bit like the London Underground down here. It smells like it too. Oh, this is all going too smoothly, isn't it? Well, what a cool wee place right at the end of the line. I was just expecting the ferry port, but no, we've got so much more. Proper town, church at the top of the hill, and this looks very nice in here. And it didn't take us long to find the sea. Lovely marina over there. I wonder if I can just wander around and have a look at the boats. You know I love to look at boats. Right, that's all very nice, but let's focus and get back on track. What we're looking for is Paul Ferries, and Paul Ferries will take us to Poland. There is a check in there that just says Destination Gotland. I think Gotland's an island, but we're going right across the Baltic to Gdansk. Sweden actually invaded Poland once, well they tried, but now you can just take a ferry. I just hope I'm in the right place. When I see no mention of Paul Ferries or Poland, I get this sinking feeling in my stomach. But I'm glad we've arrived nice and early because if I was here with only like five minutes to spare or something I'd be stressing so much. Oh, Paul Ferries, yes! Well, now that I can see where to check in, I can relax and I'm going to keep walking for a bit because just over the brow of this hill I think I can see a big ship and we've got the luxury of time to go and have a look at it. Okay, here we go, let's see if we can check in.
Right, that's me all checked in. I was also checking when you can actually board the ship, but it's not until half an hour before departure, so that's at 5.30. So rather than just sit about in that little holding area, I'm going to go outside again and just go for a wander. Plenty of time. A wee supermarket would be nice. I do have dinner booked on the ferry tonight. I've paid for that already with my ticket. So I'm not looking for anything to eat just now, but just some wee supplies would be good. Ah, they've got a co-op, perfect. It's just like Montrose High Street. Right, I was spending far too long in there. Let's get back to that ship. Oh, it looks like I'm just in time. The terminal was a wee bit from the ship, so I thought there'd be a bus or something, but oh no, we're just walking straight through the bow. Sorry I missed a bit getting on the ferry, it was chaos. There we go, it's not quite Stena, but it'll do the job. Hey, that's all right, isn't it? Good enough for me. There we go, I'm sitting down, but I'm not sitting down for long. I'm just gonna change the battery in the camera and we'll get up on deck. And the other thing I'm doing is switching off mobile data on my phone because I got caught out with that before and it cost me about 40 quid. So now I just do it whenever I'm on board. I think I saw something that's free Wi-Fi on this ship. We'll see if that works. Look, they've even got British plug sockets. I wasn't expecting that. Right, let's go. First impressions are there's not much in the way of design, it's quite bland and functional, but I'm fine with that. <laughs> so I went to the main reception with my ticket and they give you a voucher for the restaurant and it'll be the Buffy restaurant which is just right next door to reception. Aye, so it'll be in there in the Buffy that I go for my dinner, but at the moment I'm just going to go out on deck. Oh no, according to the sign, the sun deck is back the way I came. That's strange, I didn't see the door. P.S. That's a heavy door. All right, I finally found my way outside. I was getting worried there that there wasn't gonna be any deck access and I'm kind of hoping this isn't it. There must be more. But this is the outdoor bar. Now I've been in a lot of ferries. The outdoor bar's never been open. You can tell I'm a winter traveler. Now the name Jivietz, do you recognize that from a previous video? It wasn't one of mine.
there's not masses of deck space there's lots of red and white tape stopping you going any further but it's good enough but now i've had a look inside and outside this is definitely a ferry you know i've been on some ferries where i'm like is this a cruise ship but no this is a ferry Just like that, it's goodbye Sweden. Oh, I think I can hear the car alarms every time. But anyway, it took ages to leave port. It was a really tricky maneuver. Had to turn right round. But that's us heading out now. There's not much to see on this route. So I think I'll head inside and have my dinner. And then we'll just have a nice quiet evening. There is a wee casino on board, but it's like a ghost town. Everything's switched off. I'm not sure if that's a legal thing on this route, but it's not happening in here tonight. So look at my Polish dinner here. I've got Zurich, which is a really famous Polish soup. I've got some kind of cutlet, potatoes, vegetables, some beetroot, some uh, bread and a drink. Now, I can't remember how much this was because I paid for it at the time of the reservation, but I'll put it in here right now. That's so good, the meat, the potatoes, it's just so beautiful and tender. I had some kind of Zurich when I was in Moldova, but it was super sour. This is not like that, I really like the Polish version. Now onto the colourful main course, it looks amazing and it's a massive portion. Oh yes, this is like proper kind of homemade food, do you know what I mean? Ah, all the machines have come to life now. It must just be that it wasn't allowed in Sweden. But as soon as you're out in international waters, anything goes. Could I have a Jivyets, please? Jivyets? Yeah. Ah, here we go again. Cheers, guys. Good morning, it's funny when you've got an inside cabin you've got absolutely no idea what the weather's like outside and I'm pleasantly surprised this morning. It's a bit windy but what a day. Way off in the distance we can now see the northern coast of Poland but I tell you what it's taken a while to get there. We left at 6 o'clock last night and we don't get in till midday today and by my calculation that is 18 hours at sea and to be 18 hours on such a basic ferry that's been a long night but to be fair the cabin was excellent really good temperature and no rattles at all so i slept really well 
And today when we get into Gdansk, I think I'm just gonna have a chill day, no filming at all, and we'll get back on it tomorrow. That's a new one to me, I've never had this in a ferry before. We've stopped in the middle of the bay and we're doing like a 360 on the spot, surrounded by all these big ships. I've got no idea what's going on here. This is absolutely crazy folks, we've been on this ferry already for over 18 hours and we've been in port for over an hour and we're still waiting to get off, I've no idea what the hold up is but I'm getting so bored. Last we're leaving the ship, that was just crazy, I'll tell you about it in a second. Well, we finally made it to Poland, but that is just the craziest deboarding procedure I've ever seen for any ferry company. In fact, boarding was just as bad. Right, so I think I've found my bus stop, so now I can tell you a bit about the craziness on that ship. Basically, as a foot passenger, you have to get on and off the same way as all the big trucks, so that leads to a lot of delays. So even after an 18 hour overnight crossing, we were tied up alongside and we had to wait over an hour just to get off the ship before it was safe to do so. Not only that, but they wouldn't let us use the stairs to get off, we had to use this tiny little lift that only took 10 people, so... The queue was just creeping forward really slowly and it was an exhausting experience. But here we are now, out in the fresh air and everything is good. Wow, 
Now Poland is not an easy place for a tourist like me to arrive. I got on the bus, asked for a ticket. The driver said, we don't sell tickets on the bus. So you either have to buy them in advance at a ticket machine, there wasn't one there, or you have to download the app. So I was frantically trying to download the app, but it wouldn't work. So I've had to jump off again in some random place. I've no idea where we are, but it looks like we're walking to the city centre. There we go folks, finally, three hours and ten minutes after having arrived at the port, we've arrived into Gdansk city centre. And what a beautiful afternoon to arrive. But my advice is take a taxi. Thank you so much for watching. I'm off to regroup now and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Hello. Oh, just before I forget, let me show you the apartment I've got booked here in Gdansk. Now this costs 35 quid a night, so my advice is don't book a hotel when you're in Poland. Try and get yourself an Airbnb because you might get somewhere like this. So we've got a fully fitted kitchen there, and then through to the massive living room, big TV, and there's windows running the full length of the apartment. It's such a bright place. And then just through to my bedroom, and of course, the bathroom. Aye, so it's just amazing what you can get for 35 quid a night over here, isn't it? And just across there is the main railway station of Gdansk, and that is where the journey continues tomorrow. Thanks guys, see you later. <laughs>